Hi, my name's Sam and today we're going to be going through the adult subcutaneous insulin order form and blood glucose record form. On the form, the first thing to look at before you look at administering insulin to your patient is has the top section with the patient identifiers been completed. This can be done either with a Bradmar label or handwritten with the patient's UR number, family name, first name, address, date of birth and the box ticked for their sex, male or female. The first prescriber to fill out the form also needs to print the patient's name and tick the box as to whether they've checked their identity and the national inpatient medication chart has also been noted. The doctor to notify if there's any changes also needs to write his name. Moving on, this is what the section in the middle that is colour coded is where we record the patient's blood glucose levels. This is done as per the frequency listed above. In this case, pre-meals at 2100 and 0200 hours. With this patient, this section is colour coded, similar to the National Inpatient Medication Chart, that gives you some prompts should something be out of normal range. The white, unshaded area, we consider to be within what is acceptable within the hospital system, between 4 and 12 units. With this patient, we've been recording her blood glucose level, as it's crept up, once in here in the yellow section, it says if there's three consecutive levels above 12, the doctor needs to be notified. It doesn't matter what they are. It's three levels above 12. At this point here, once we've got to our third level, we've notified the doctor as per the instructions on the left. Um, we've also done a ketones check. Once the level has reached 16, as per the instructions on the left in the orange section. Depending on what insulin this patient has been prescribed in their regular insulin orders, we may need to add some supplemental insulin, which is listed over here on the right. The instructions for that is that it's given with meals only. The doctor has signed and printed their name and prescribed the number of units of supplemental insulin required, dependent on the patient's blood glucose level at any given meal. The, insula, the routine insulin prescribed, in this case Nova Rapid, is prescribed with meals and Lantus is prescribed at bedtime. Moving forward here, as this patient has an elevated blood glucose level and we've done some more monitoring than what is catered for on the chart per day, we draw a line from the date over to the middle of the next date, block out the area at the top and continue charting our blood glucose levels. Once we complete them for that day, we then start a new day. As the insulin is often charted for multiple days ahead, we've, we're no longer correlating to the charting at the bottom. So we stop that, contact the, do the doctor concerned and get them to rechart. So the charting corresponds to the date we're taking blood glucose levels. If our patient's blood glucose level drops below four, we need to commence hypoglycemia intervention. On the back of the chart, we've got a flow chart to allow you to follow step by step what you need to do dependent on the patient's condition. Other areas of the chart give you pointers as to what is, should be prescribed by the doctor that fits in with normal limits. Um, we have a section on the bottom that allows for any pre-hospital treatment for uh, diabetes to be listed. In this case, the patient was only on oral hypoglycemics of one gram metformin BD. Uh, if, for example, our patient's blood glucose level is elevated and we've notified our doctor and they've given us a phone order, they're not here, this goes at the top, phone orders and stat orders. If we need to add, in this case, an additional order of 10 units of Nova Rapid at 20 hundred hours, this is then documented down the bottom with the time at phone, the number of units, and we have to get the doctor to come and sign those orders within 24 hours of writing them. When we document our blood glucose levels with our patients, we also need to document what insulin we've given them. In this case, Nova Rapid 8 units was given in correspondence with our 0700 blood glucose level. It was given at 0730. We also gave one unit of supplemental insulin as per the insulin chart. It was signed by the nurse administering and checking the insulin order. And we've got a section down here for comments if we need to for doctors notified or any other care that we've provided. 
On the outside of the page, we have guidelines for the treatment of following hyperglycemic alerts. This is information of what needs to be checked and followed up on. It also gives a little flow chart of what we need to do to return that patient to their normal level. There's some guides down the bottom for stat and supplemental insulin orders that the doctors can follow, dependent on the levels of blood glucose that are measured by the staff. We also have a section over here for treating hypoglycemia and the flow chart can be followed to give the best patient outcome and the course of action that the nursing staff need to take. This of course all needs to be documented in the patient record. The bottom section on the back follows guidelines for diabetes treatment following a review of a hypoglycemic event. This goes through finding the cause for that event and perhaps modifying orders um, according to the medical treating team. If there are any changes that need to be made to the chart, you need to contact the treating team, the treating doctor or the doctor on call.